Hey everyone and welcome back to the Oregonians Pac-12 Basketball Roundup. As you can tell, we have a little bit of a different camera angle today because one of us, this guy, didn't come very prepared so we had to use a different camera. But anyways, I'm Tyson Alger. I'm joined here by Danny Moran. Uh, we cover the Oregon and Oregon State basketball programs and uh, I think Oregon made its case this week to be included amongst the country's best and I yep. think Oregon State did a really good job at saving their se uh, season. So Danny, let's start off with the Beavers. What's going on? Yeah, both teams obviously had sweeps of the mountain schools, Colorado and Utah. Uh, Oregon State's, while not as dominant as Oregon's, was you know more essential to their season. Yeah, I right. can't really argue that. I mean, uh, they're in a position where they were three and six coming into this week. Uh, they had lost to Utah and Colorado previously. Uh, both games were close. One basically with free throws down yeah. the stretch. The first one was amazing. One of the <laughs> strangest games I've ever been to, where. Uh, Stephen Thompson Jr. was fouled with .01 Don't seconds to go. Don't foul at the half court if you're up. Yeah, just pretty good strategy. I'm sure that's what Larry Kristowiak uh, yeah. mentioned to oh, his yeah. guys. But um, and, I'm, and I'm sure he did it just as happily as that after the yeah, game. Yeah, you know? yeah, very smiley and everything. Yeah. That's the kind of guy he is. But no, um, that was a big win, but they had to follow up with another home win against Colorado. They had a 13-point lead at one point. That went away as Colorado made a run without Josh Scott. Um, but Oregon State was able to power through and, and get the victory. So now they got to go on the road, five of their last seven, including one uh, two weeks from now right. at Oregon. Um, you got to think to make the tournament, they have to win at least two, yeah. probably three to be safe, um, or unless they wanted to make a big you know, run in the Pac-12 tournament. But, yeah, um, boy, their 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 next three games are going to be awfully tough yeah. at Cal, at Stanford, and then at Oregon, where. Uh, they they uh it's been an announced sellout for uh, the civil war there. Yeah, the Ducks and Cal are both undefeated at home. Stanford's tough. Uh, Oregon State hasn't won there since two thousand nine. Since nineteen ninety, which is the last year that Oregon State made the tournament, they've won a combined seven games in the Bay. Oh, that's a great stat. Yeah. yeah. So I, actually, and and Oregon's yeah. traditionally struggled down in the Bay too. That, yeah. That, yeah. That was that was a big moment for them last season when they went down there and I. Correct me if I'm wrong. I think they swept. I think Oregon swept down there, and they needed to sweep to basically keep right. their season going. So Oregon State's almost in a similar position that Oregon was last year. Pretty much, because they've lost a couple at home, and they have to make it up somehow, and yeah. they're really running out of time. But the Ducks, as we, you alluded to, pretty dominant performance both games this week. Yeah, that it's six straight wins now for the Ducks, and kind of the most impressive thing I think during that streak is they haven't really been pushed in the final minutes of any of those games. Right. Uh, yeah. I, their their smallest loss in that span has been by eight points, and since then they've been, you know they don't necessarily always jump out to a huge lead, but they always kind of make their move about five minutes into the second half and kind of pull away there. And uh, you saw that in a pretty dominating win over Colorado, and then uh, Utah Dylan Brooks just kind of went off in that game 30, 30 points, uh, career high nine assists. Uh, I think he had about six boards too, and. Uh, e even before this week, this was a player who was kind of starting to get his name into those Pac-12 Player of the Year discussions. I, I'd say he kind of put himself right in the, the driver's seat after, after this week, after that Utah game. I thought it was pretty impressive. Yeah, I mean, not a lot of teams going into this week were playing better than Utah. It was probably, you know, I think in our power rankings from last week, we had, had them number two, didn't one, we? Yeah, yeah, Oregon one and two, and so to go up against a guy, even though he wasn't playing one on one with Jakob Pertl, yeah. But I mean, nobody was really playing better in the conference than Pertl, and so to have that kind of performance, you'd think that elevates Brooks for sure. Well, and and what what was relatively uh, uh, interesting about that game is originally they first had Boucher on uh, Hurdle. Blah, blah. <laughs> Pertle, yeah. Pertle. It's tough, though. There's, yeah. there's no R in there. No, there is no R. Uh, so, so initially they had Boucher going up against him, and <laughs> Pertle's a much bigger guy than Boucher and was right. just bossing him around. Well, you know, Boucher's, uh, you know, he's 6'11", but he's stick thin and just couldn't really man up against him. So they, they switched and put Brooks on him, and while he still got his points, Brooks did a very much did a very respectable job of defending there. So Brooks isn't just playing well offensively. He's doing really well on the defensive end. And um, after this week, you saw Oregon move up five spots in the AP poll to number 11. Right. I voted them at number 10. Uh, I've had some yahoos uh, telling me that they there's nobody in the country with a better resume than Oregon. I would argue there's about nine teams with a better <laughs> resume than Oregon. But it seems that they're finally getting their due after – um, you know, they, they made their reappear uh, reappearance in the AP poll about, I think it was about three or four weeks ago. I don't think they necessarily had a case for falling out originally. You know, it's, it's just kind of one of those teams that haven't, whenever it's not a traditional power, I think a lot of the voters are more eager to not give them the benefit of doubt a lot of times. Right. So it, it's really taken Oregon, you know, six straight quality wins to really kind of get that, um, 
uh, just kind of praise around the country. I mean, they have four losses, and uh, some some of their wins are better than <laughs> no. Right. Their the, their wins are their best part of their resume, and then their four losses are by far their worst because right. they still have kind of those two really bad ones with UNLV and Boise State, which they had guys injured. Uh, Oregon State, which kind of looks like a wash of a loss now, kind of you know, right. not terrible, not great, and uh, I don't think at Colorado was a bad loss by any means, but. Yeah, and you, I mean, you think now, I mean, they still have time given what their schedule is. I mean, they can make up that Oregon State loss. Oh, you know, yeah, completely. Emphatically at home. Well, I mean, I mean, if you look at, like, KenPom.com, they do kind of predicted ranking or predicted games for the rest of the year. They don't have Oregon. They have Oregon losing one more game the whole rest of the year, and that's mm-hmm. at USC. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I think this week at Cal is going to be a really tough game. Like you said, Cal's undefeated at home this year. Uh, they really kind of put the smack down on Stanford last week. Yeah. Um, granted, they Cal's still a little injured, but... Yeah, still no Tyrone Wallace, we're assuming, you know, based on the original time frame that right. was reported, which was four to six weeks. I think that was three weeks ago that he went out with a uh, broken wrist, so that could be a benefit. But, no, I think what you alluded to earlier was a good point. I mean, for both teams, even though they're at different points of their season, it's a tough road trip. I mean, just to yeah. go down to the Bay, and it's going to be two games in three days, um, it, it'll be a tough stretch for both. Yeah, so uh, I'll be sticking around here, but Danny's going to be down in the Bay Area. You're covering both Cal games, I believe. Both Cal games. I'll be in Berkeley. So there will be coverage on OregonLive.com slash Ducks and Beavers for those. We're both on Twitter, at Tyson Alger, at Danny J. Moran. And uh, we'll be back next week.